We're going to start, though, we're going to start our show with Ralph Ragnick and his start at Old Trafford. His United side, of course, won at the weekend, mm. beating Palace by a goal to Totally different, even though it was the same side from, I think it was the starting eleven that beat Arsenal. Hammered Arsenal, your old <laughs> side. But it was a totally different looking United. They were high pressing, they were, um, the, the ball possession, the high energy, the 4-2-2-2, two, 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 the, mm. the runner, Marcus Rashford, alongside Ronaldo, the, the eight second one, etc., isn't it amazing what a new manager or any manager can do within, what, two days? How you get that across very quickly is, is a masterpiece for me because they look like they've been playing that for most of the season, the way they performed. 4-2-2-2 two, two, two is the formation he played at Leipzig uh, when he was very successful. So he's going to go with that. Um, and do you know what I, I noticed as well? Darren Fletcher was heavily involved in a dugout area, which mm-hmm. he wasn't with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He was always in the stands, I think, as a technical director. That's right, that's right. So he might have a lot more to, to, to say now. And he yeah. was a great, great player for, for Manchester United, Darren Fletcher. Very yeah. underrated for me. Mm-hmm. So he might have a big part to play. But yeah, I mean, just the full-backs bombed on, didn't they? And, and they well, they defended when they had to. I thought Fred and McTominay were excellent in yeah. central midfield. They, they covered people when they had to. So I, th- I think all round, I mean, Palace are a good side now. Mm. I-, I like the way uh, Patrick's got Palace playing. So it wasn't an easy game for Manchester United, but they could probably maybe should have won a, a few more, scored a few more yeah. goals, if I'm being I honest. It's interesting when you said about the fullbacks that wan was left out and Dallow played again. Mm. I wonder if going forward that's what Rangnick's going to do. I don't know if United fans feel that that's a better option. Well, all he's got to do, Dallow, is, is play the way he is. And how could you leave him out? Because I, I think he's been one of their better players in the last couple of games. Mm-hmm. So, as a player, you know, you, you want the, you've got to trust the managers to say, well, if, if you give me the opportunity and I'll play well, you've got to play me next week. And that's what he's got to do now. And wan now has got a job to probably get in the side at the moment. But he's got to work a little bit harder and, and wait for his opportunity to get back in the side. Let me ask you this, because I want to put this out to United fans. We've got lots to talk about, and football fans as well. Uh, we're not even halfway through the season yet. So 15 games played, United the sixth on 24 points. City are top, 11 points above them. Mm. No one catch them. Two, two questions, two <laughs> questions. Can United get top four? Um, of course they can, yeah. Okay, three points to gap between them and West Ham at the moment. Yeah. Can... United win the Premier League this season? Well, they can win it, but they won't. United will definitely not no, win it. No, no. I think realistically, the Man United big. fans will look at it and say, no, we can't win the league this year. But if they can get in the top four and it's a progress, then next season will be interesting. Yeah. Uh, have have see. you seen enough in one well, game? It, that's it. Who, who's going to be manager next year? That's well, the big if, question. if he's successful. Well, I don't, yeah, they could stick with him. Who, um, who's your favourites for fourth spot? Well, I think Manchester United were the bookmakers because what the bookmakers have start their book at the start of the season, now uh, I'm going to go down my um, uh, gambling way now, is that they would have been a big, bit much bigger odds than West Ham or sure. Spurs or Arsenal. So Manchester United will still be favourites, but you can't you can't not write West Ham off. Who are I your favourites? I think with this new manager coming in and the next, five, you see the next five games for Manchester United? Unbelievable. They're, they're all winnable. Norwich away, Brentford away, Brighton at home, Newcastle away, Burnley at home. So they're winnable. Uh, I'm going to stick my neck out and say West Ham. If they can buy okay. a couple of players in forwards, in the window forwards, um, and you've got Declan. You've got to keep Declan Rice fit and Suchek in midfield. They're, mm-hmm. they're great partnership in midfield. They will have a very good chance of okay. maybe coming forth this year. Fred and McTominay. Okay, now I, I got the impression that Solskjaer loved them so much that they were always going to start, mm. and th- th- there was maybe a blind spot with that team selection with Ollie and those two but I just wonder now if they're going to continue being a part of that starting eleven under the new manager as well can you see them both starting can you see them both playing together does it, does it work having those kind of players next to each other in that formation well it, it, at the moment it, they played well yesterday both of them McTominay I like McTominay I think he's going to get better I think mm-hmm. he's still a young lad he's still improving um, I, I, what, what they've done well they, they um, when Tellez and Dalot bombed on you know they sat. They, they defended well at times as well. Yeah. So they've done well covering people. Um, but whether they, it's all about performances, isn't it? I mean, we've already heard from Jurgen Klopp and people like that saying what a manager this guy is, and every other club should be aware what he's achieved in his career. Um, and I think he's a sort of manager. If you don't do it for him, you won't play. What, what's uh, it like? Sort, when so new... he's got. A, it's all about. It's, it's down to the player to perform every week. What's it like when a new, a new manager comes in, Ray? Well, you're on the same level again which is good because I'm sure managers will have their favourites, not favourites, but the teams they want to pick every single week. Mm-hmm. Everyone's on the same uh, playing level then. You, you, if you've not been playing for a while, like Dolot hasn't been playing, is he, at all? Wayne Pisek has been playing. Now, suddenly, 
he's come in and said, well, no, wait a minute, I like your ways training, and I know it's only been two days, mm. but then suddenly... Signs are good. Yeah, everyone's on the same uh, wavelength. Let's go to the phone lines, 03717 Jake's a Man United fan, he's up next. Hello, Jake, how are you? How you doing, Andy? You good? I'm good, I'm very well, thanks for asking. How are you? Good, yeah, very well. Pleasure to speak to Big Ray as well. I'm a Man United fan, but he's a legend. How are you doing, Jake? <laughs> he is a legend, you're right, Jake. He- yeah. Don't, know, don't know about you that, Jake. <laughs> you are now, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just want to say I think Fred's getting a lot of stick over the past few years. Um, he is a, a player, I think, that needs to be in that team. You know, there's a, there's a lot of players in the United team that don't really give their 110% effort a lot of the time. You know, they go hiding. I think McTominay can be one of those. But look at Fred, you know, his first name on the Brazilian team sheet. We change manager. All of a sudden, he's got two man and matches in a row. I think uh, I think he deserves a lot more credit than he's than he's been due for for the last couple of years. So, do you think he he should start now, Fred? Because he does divide United fans, Jake, doesn't he? He does. He does. Yeah. But the problem I find is that Ole played him in a, a set of defensive role, and one of his weaknesses is you know getting pressed. You know his skill is doing the pressing. So if you play higher up the pitch, you know where the mistakes he might make are less impactful and you can let him do what he needs to do best, he's going to get that ball and give him a short pass to Bruno or to Ronaldo or Sancho, and that's how we're going to score. Mm. Can United win the Premier League this season, Jake? Come on, mate. <laughs> OK, can United get top... Are they favourites for top four? I know they can, of course. Are they favourites for top four now? I think I think they are, you know. We've got the squad. We've got the squad. I, I like to think that Ralph will come in and get us organised, get us playing further up the pitch, and then, you know, the players we've got... They only need half a chance to score. We just need to keep out of our own half. OK, Jake, thanks for your call. Let's take one more. 03717 That's the number that Pete, the Man United fan, has dialed. Hello, Pete. How are you? Afternoon, Pete. Hi, Chaps. Great show as usual. Thank you, Pete. It's very kind of you. Go on, off you go. Um, yeah, I think Fred's always been this player. I think the problem is, as the previous caller said, that we, he's never had the support in pressing. That he'll be up the pitch trying when they get past him. Everyone says he's out of position. But actually, now we're, we're showing... That if there's people behind him, he's in the right position because he's at the top pressing. He's not been employed or bought or contracted at Man United to score goals, although he scored a, world, scored a worldie yesterday. Mm-hmm. But his job has always been to break up play. And in my opinion, it's always been there. But now Ralph has put in the support for him and the two lines so that people can support what he's doing. I think he's brilliant. I really do. You think he's brilliant? You're saying Fred's brilliant? I genuinely, at his job and his job alone... He has always been a brilliant because all you need is intensity. Mm. I don't want to see step overs from Fred. I don't want to see flicks and tricks. He wins the ball, he passes it back. Roy Key made a career out of it. I'm not saying he's on the same level as Dean yet. However, he has always had that. He just never had the support or framework behind him to show it. Okay. Well, good call. Thanks, Pete. Mm. Have a lovely afternoon. Cheers, Jack. There you go, Pete, the main United fan. Well, I can certainly see where he's coming from with the pressing because, you know, as a, as a team, you've got to do it together. You've got to be on the same level when you do it. And there's no good two players doing it and there's suddenly the other the other three around you is not doing it because mm. they get through you quickly. And maybe the manager said, right, this is what we've got to do. You've got to press, you press as well. And he shows them exactly when to go and when not to. And maybe that helps his game, Fred, because he is the sort of guy who wins a ball back. And I see what he said. What I liked about uh, Man United as well... I don't want to get carried away, man, because it's a one 0 win against Palace. But it's, it's, look, it's a good Palace, by the yeah, way. Yeah, good, good Palace team. The way they pass the ball forward a lot better. And now when they got well. the ball, yeah. straight away they look around, boff forward. It's easy sometimes mm-hmm. to go square. It's, it, this is when the old stats come out. You say, oh, oh look, he doesn't give the ball away. Ninety-five percent possession, he keeps it. But I could, I could keep it now. Going square backwards. It's, it's all about mm-hmm. the passing forward, quick. And that's what Liverpool are good at. You watch Liverpool, how they play. Jordan mm. Henderson, when he gets a ball, first touch, boff, next pass, 20 yards forward. Mm. Suddenly, as a midfielder, as a midfielder trying to mark Jordan, you're on your back foot. You've got to turn and you, you worry about people behind you then. So I think Manchester United have done that much better. 